guys, it's me, Danielle, Danny Buttons. And if you saw my last video, you will already know what this cup is. This is basically my coloring challenges cup. In here, I have 20 different prompts, um, all written down on paper that I explained in my last video, linked up above. And I'm gonna pick one today and do whatever the challenge is. So I am going to, honestly, so I'm looking right now, I'm gonna mix them up, but then I'm gonna turn away and pick one randomly. And if not, I'm only looking through my phone screen anyway, so I can't really see. Then we'll pick what book we have to do from there. So, all right, ready? I promise you my eyes are closed. What did we get? Watercolors, hooray. So we picked watercolors. I'm going to put all of these challenges back in here. Woo and then I'm gonna pick my book. What do we wanna see? I actually have been thinking of doing my How I Color watercolors, but now I feel like that's a waste of a challenge. What do we think? I don't know. I'm gonna pick my book and be right back. Okie dokie. So I think I'm gonna do a page from Mermaids in Paradise. I'm pretty excited. This is by Denise Collette. And I've only done one page in here and it's been a while, so. Should be fun, I picked one, we'll see how this goes. Uh, let's just show you right away. It is a relatively simple one. I'm probably not gonna do the background, especially not on video. Maybe I'll um, do it off screen and come back just because if I do it, it won't be in watercolor. So we will see how we're looking. Um, I think this will be a good place to show watercolor technique. Don't know. So the supplies I'm using is obviously the book. I am using my set of metallic watercolors from Michaels. These I think were $5. They're Artist Loft brand, which is just Michaels in-home brand. And I've recently rediscovered these and have been enjoying them a lot. And I'm also going to be using my Prima Marketing um, watercolor confections. I actually have two sets, the classics and something else, which I don't remember right now. Let's see if it says it on here and pastel dreams. So there's a bunch of sets of these. I really enjoy them. I might put more of these on my wish list to be honest, but this little tin is incredibly convenient for watercoloring. It has a nice loop on the back to hold it like a palette. I'm sure I just jostled everybody. Um, it originally came with one, two, three, four, five, five, 12 colors. So there were six on the top, six on the bottom, and I ended up squeezing in another nine, right? Seven, yeah. Um, so almost a full second palette will fit. Now, if I ended up getting a third palette, I can put the remaining of these colors and those. They're so tiny, they're definitely worth it. And it has a lot of space for mixing. I've shown these before, you can take this out and mix right in there. I think this is going to end up turning into a how I color watercolor video instead of a challenge or on top of being a challenge, but I did pull watercolors. I promise you I did not look. And also just for the record, I'm gonna be putting this to the side after this so I don't pull it again right away. We'll see how many challenges I do before I put that back in. Okay, let's get to it. I'm also using a water pen. I'm pretty sure this is Kurtaki brand. I will link everything I can below. And I'm using my water cup, which has my paint puck, which I absolutely love. And I recommend that to anybody who does any painting in which you need to wash your brushes. It's basically this little silicone um, squeegee and you can run your brush through there and it cleans it and it's much nicer on the brushes than just like squishing your brush on the bottom of your cup. Um, this came in a three pack, which is what I will link, but they also have ones that are attached to the cup. So it's a specific cup and it even has like slots that will hold your brushes standing upright. So enough about that. Let's put this to the side. I decided to pick a nice and simple one. And if you can believe it, I did not think about my color palette in advance. So this might be crazy. Who knows what's gonna happen? Um, <laughs> let's see. I know I'm going to do the bubbles in metallic. Should I do the bubbles first? That seems weird. Let's think about the colors for a second. So I love doing mythical creatures with mythical unrealistic skin tones. So that's the first thing. I will probably not be doing her human colored at all. Um, 
I'm just trying to think what I want to do. Do you guys have any ideas? I'm probably just going to do the goldfish shades of oranges. Like, what else is new? I really was thinking of doing the tail in a bunch of blues. Uh, I thought that could be nice. I don't know if I'm going to do just this tail bit or all of this leading up to it. That's a lot of blue. I mean, I'm probably going to end up doing that. Let's see. I'm checking to see what the other page I colored in here is and if I'm just going to end up doing the same thing by accident because, yeah, I did the other one purple. Can you see that? Yes. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Should we just do Ariel? I feel like I always tend to do that also. Let's work on the fish while we're thinking about it. So there are two different ways that I watercolor. One of them is really just straight coloring and one of them is mixing things. So we'll see what happens right now. I think I'm actually gonna do the fish, like it has such long limbs and things that I'm probably gonna do it like an ombre if I can. So we're gonna start with red. I think this, is this crimson? I also keep a paper towel on me that it's, it's really just like crim crinkled up. It's not a fancy paper towel, but I'm gonna see what happens. Okay, so for water coloring, what I recommend is whenever you put your brush down first, that's gonna be your darkest spot. So put it, think of that as you're going. So I like to put it against the lines and then I'll just pull out and it'll get lighter from there. You probably have more paint on your brush than you think you do. I, again, let me preface this. I am very much not an expert. I've just, I'm someone who's been doing this a while and thinks I know a few tips, but um, yeah. So I always will start wherever you want it the darkest and then pull out and it gets lighter as you pull out. Luckily with watercolor, it's pretty easy to move this paint around even after the fact. So if I like wet my brush, I could probably pick up a lot of that color. If you wanted it lighter, um, you could add more color on top. This book in particular has really thick pages, so I probably will not have to worry about it going through. Of course, I did put a piece of paper and my little cutting board behind there just in case. And these are single sided just in case. But if you do work in a book that is either double sided or thinner pages overall, you just have to be really careful with the amount of water you put on there. And if you need to put more layers, you just need to let it dry really well in between and then you should be okay. So, so I think I'm gonna start the edges of this in dark and then lighten as we go. We'll see, maybe I'm gonna make a fool of myself and I won't know what I'm doing, but that is my goal. So let's put the dark. I'm just gonna do it on this one little thing to see if it's even possible before we keep going. Um, an, a thing I personally had to like get over before I um, got better at watercolors is it's okay if these get a little messy because they, they essentially clean themselves. So like there's blue on that green, but I can just put water on there and it'll wash itself off, so. Yes, we're just gonna rub our next color right into it and let them flow together. And again, I personally am not doing these incredibly wet, so that might be why it's not running too much. Again, I can go back in with my original color and like go over that line where they're meeting to blend it easier or more cohesively. You just kinda go with the flow and then mixing the colors on my brush will help it too. I feel like it was maybe very crazy of me to teach you things as I'm trying them for the first time, but that's where we're at. So now I went to the yellow and again, I'm just gonna keep going. In general, I usually recommend you do light to dark for everything. So I don't know what's going on here, but it's going. And then again, you can go back to your last color and kind of blend them together. What do we think? Did I do it? I feel like it looks pretty 
uh, orange. So maybe I'll go in with an even darker red at the top. Ooh -hoo -hoo. I mean, that's definitely red now. Ah! Ah! I spilt over the side. That's unfortunate, but not much to do about that. I'm praying that my hair was not just in all of that. First of all, my hair looks crazy, and I feel like it's not a good look. But second of all, I keep doing that. Ugh, because my camera is on, like, the lower end of my phone. Ugh, I'll be very upset. Okay, sorry. Back to the darkest color. <clears throat> Yeah, so I'm essentially mixing right on the paper. Of course, you can mix on your palette first and get all these different colors. I have enjoyed in the past doing full pages with just the 12 set. Um, that's a fun challenge, I suppose. So if you don't wash your brush between color changes, it's almost mixing for you. So that's nice. Yeah, this is going much smoother. This thin, I almost said leaf. I feel like a lot of people are scared of watercolors and I'm one of those people that I think I don't know what I'm doing, but honestly, it's all just trial and error and you'll get better at it the more you do it. You'll like understand how much water and how much everything you need. You know. And obviously it doesn't all have to look uniform, which is one thing I struggle with, is that I always want it to look very even, but the whole point of watercolor is to be like flowy and this is a little bit dark still. Oh, that's okay, okay. So yeah, you can even, even back to this first one, I can go back in and keep brushing and it'll keep moving around. I think it's come out pretty good. Pretty good. So this brush in general will uh, like leak water in a good way. I don't know if that's the right word. So there's water in the brush. So in theory, you don't really need to go to your cup very often, but I like to go to my cup to switch colors um, and just this brush is getting a little bit old, so it doesn't work as well as it used to. When you do dunk in your cup instead, though, you want, might want to dab off some of your water, so it's not too much, but yeah, yes. I like it. She looks pretty cool, right? I hope that the colors are coming up nicely in the video. So I'm gonna start back with my dark, dark red. This is a long, thin, I guess it's her whole tail. So more dark red. But yeah, all that to say too, is that you really don't need many colors to watercolor because you can make them all with your basic colors. Of course, it's nicer to have larger sets, but if you just wanna try it and you don't wanna invest right away, you don't need to. I'm, I've done many a picture with just the 12 set. Because again, once you just know how colors work, you can really make anything with your primary colors. So, I think we're doing good. Um, I'm almost tempted to already rewatch back what I'm doing to make sure my hair's not in it because again I'm gonna cry if I'm that foolish again and put my hair in it again mm. I've never had this problem and then all of a sudden I have had this problem. So this one I'm keeping a little bit darker, apparently. I 
I kind of love it. Like, I think we're crushing it. And then we'll get lighter up here. I'm not doing much chatting because I am very distracted, so I apologize for that. But sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. Okay. Um, I don't know what to chat about. That's the only thing I didn't think of. I can chat. Samuel's birthday is coming up. His birthday is the 14th of August. And of course, we're not having like a party this year because of pandemic. We might have like a tiny game night with two or three of our friends, which is well under regulations here. So I don't feel bad about doing that. I think that'll be okay. Um, but I'm, it is sad to not be able to have a bigger party, but of course, gotta do what you gotta do with that too. I'm saying that a lot, but it's true. So I bought him a bunch of stuff already. I'm hoping to get him a chair from Ikea, which I told you about in my office tour. Hey, I can finally link something. <laughs> um, we, I also, in that tour, I said that we have couches that point at chairs, and that's not true. Our couches point at each other, and they don't point at the television. So he really wants a chair, but in our living room, I can't figure out how to make that happen. So in the office, we definitely have space. And then, of course, it'll just be a regular, like, I don't know if anyone, I don't know how to pronounce it, first of all, but it's like Ikea's signature chair. So he can definitely move it into that other room if he needs to. Also, our fish is done and I love it. Do you love it? I love it. I'm gonna zoom back out and we'll zoom in on something else. I think that came out really great. Like I'm impressed. All right, so I think we're gonna do the tail in blues. And by that, I mean from here down. So we'll see about the rest of this when we get to it. I might do like almost teals. And I think we're gonna do the same thing, but in blues. So I'm gonna start at really dark blue and then work our way up to lighter blue. Then maybe I'll end up doing her body in the dark blue and then I'll do some glitter paint also. That is the current plan. So I have, what blues? We have regular blue which is pretty dark icy blue ice sky i think these other blues i kept in the other pack because i was like i don't need seventy-eight thousand blues but let's zoom in again okay yeah so birthday presents um i'm getting him the chair but unfortunately it has been sold out at ikea which sad Hopefully we'll be getting it this week. He knows he's getting that because that's what he really wants. That's fine. Um, I also, he won't watch this, so I'm not worried. And he's not home, so this is the perfect time to talk about it. I also got him a pair of Crocs. <laughs> I, as a kid, was like, I hate Crocs. I'm never going to wear Crocs. Crocs are dumb. And, of course, now I'm like, man, these are great. And I really enjoy them. And they're like trendy again, which doesn't hurt because I really enjoy trends, to be honest with you. But they're also just comfortable. And I decided to get myself crazy colors. Um, when I got him his pair, I also got myself a second pair. <laughs> so now I have two pairs. And I have the bright yellow pair. Um, and now I have a purple pair. So I was like, if I'm going to wear Crocs you're gonna know it. Like, I'm just gonna be crazy and ridiculous and not like pretend that they're just normal shoes. No, we're going out for it. And so I got him the army green ones and they're huge. He has like size 13 feet and these shoes, I think he can like walk on water. They're so big and it's like laughable. So that's pretty funny, but um, I'm excited to see if he actually likes those. He's been wearing like boat shoes, like our Sperry's. We were into Sperry's for a bit and he's been wearing them in the backyard and they're trashed. Like he desperately needed new shoes. So hopefully he likes these shoes. Um, I think I am going to mix a tiny bit. I don't know if I'm showing you, but I'm just, uh, 
taking it and putting some color down and then taking this lighter blue and putting some color down uh, add a little bit of water dark blue just because I don't have as many colors of blue to work from so and this is a nice big space so we're just gonna do that and mix our next color so now that it's very watery because I just mixed it I will actually just have to wait for that to dry more before I keep going which is fine but We'll see what happens to that. I keep getting emails. They're definitely all advertisements. Yes, so Sam's Giant Shoes. I'm excited for him to try that. I also got him, ugh. So he has been into harmonica. And I only laugh and mock it. Basically, Sam and I are never really apart. Um, we're just not apart very often. And when we are, we don't do well with it. So in March, literally the week and before lockdown was my cousin's bachelorette party. And like we went, we had rented a house like in the woods to have the weekend. It was a good time and like the last hurrah before lockdown. But while I was gone, Sam ordered himself a harmonica and I just thought it was really funny. Like, I'm not upset he ordered it. I do joke about it. I'm like, I was gone two days and you ordered a harmonica. And I don't want people to, and by people, I mean like his sister was like, why, good for him. And I'm like, no, it is good for him. It's just more of a joke that I can't believe he did that because I was only gone two days. So he's been very into harmonica and trying to learn harmonica and playing the harmonica. And he's getting good, but I ended up getting him a phone stand that you can wear around your neck. <laughs> so it like holds the phone in front of your face. And it's funny, it's supposed to be for, or not supposed to be, but you can use it for watching like TV in bed, like laying there and it'll hold your phone up for you, things like that. But I think he will use it to play his harmonica and have the music be in front of him. So I'm excited for him to get that. I think that will be fun. And then I also bought him some Disney harmonica music to go along with that. So that is exciting for me. I'm, he's getting so much better that you can like tell what he's playing now. So that's nice. <laughs> so I think once he has some Disney music, it will be fun. I mean, of course, it's really just not fun to hear anyone learn to play an instrument. So, but he's getting there. He is getting there. Um, and then I also finally, for now, I might think of more things before his birthday, but for now, the final thing I got him was color changing light bulbs. I don't know what it is about this kid, but he loves light bulbs and he just likes, I don't know. So these are like Alexa enabled ones that he can just control with his phone and will be all fun colors. Uh oh. That might have been a mistake. Oh no, it's okay. And I think that our house is gonna be lit, as they say. <laughs> um, and he's gonna enjoy that a lot. So that is what Samuel is getting for his birthday on the 14th. So, yeah, we'll see what else we do. We're probably just gonna like order Chinese food because Sam loves Chinese food. And then that will be, that'll be that. Um, let's see again. Now I might mix this medium color, put some of that on there with this light color. Again, can you see any of this? Cause I zoomed in, probably not. Mix that up, mix it all together. It doesn't have to be perfect. So. <clears throat> How are we doing on time? We're about 25 minutes in, not too bad. Oh, I don't think I wanted to go all the way to the end. 
because I was going to put even lighter blue. So that's unfortunate, but I'll put lighter blue somewhere else then. So yeah, you can just move the color around. If you want lighter or darker, add more. I think next we'll do the metallic bubbles in case we run out of time on screen for anything else. But yeah, so I got the darker blue all over this, but just as I keep using it, the darker blue will leave and it will be back to the lighter blue. So you don't really have to worry because I very much always would worry about getting my colors dirty, but they are self-cleaning. I really, I'm going to be devastated if my hair is in this this whole time. But I just put it so far up on my head that I don't even realize that it's so far away. You know what I mean? Yeah, so I'm sad that my first challenge ended up being another episode of how I color but hey just works that way I guess I'm very happy to be using this book um let's see I think this is too light it's hard to tell because that looks like it's the back side of her tail so maybe it makes sense that it's light so maybe I'll keep it like that and then I will do the front side of the tail darker, comparatively. And just mix it all together. If this was ink tense, this would not be remixing because ink tense is forever. Um, once that is locked in, that's pretty much the end of that. So maybe I will do another how I color with the ink tense to show you that, but. For now I'm liking this doesn't it look cool I think it looks pretty cool so I'm actually just putting the darkest blue mixed with that lightest blue to get these tones and it's just every time you mix with the watercolor it's just gonna look different because it's different portions of what you got so if you are doing a big space you want to try to mix as much paint as you need right from the beginning, because it'll be hard to color match after that. But. Oh, I forgot about all of that over there. Whoops. So yeah, any problem areas, just Add more to it. Beautiful. I'm liking it. Back to our lightest blue. I also don't necessarily worry about going over any lines as you're seeing. Obviously, sometimes it's more noticeable than others that I went over the lines, but that doesn't really bother me because she's supposed to be underwater, so. Let's zoom back out and see how we're doing now. I like it. What do you guys think? I think it's pretty cool. So I think now I'm going to do some metallics just in case we run out of time. Um, and then that way you'll see me working with both. These metallics are super metallic. <laughs> Like, they're very, very shiny. I think I'm just going to do the bubbles in the metallic. And I think I might try this very, very light purple because I think that it's so light that you won't really um, know that it's purple, but it'll just be something nice and different. Let's see. Like, it's almost white, but it'll just have a tiny purple tint to it. So I think that will be nice. So for this, it's even easier. You just put your water 
right in there. These are not the highest quality of paint in the world. Again, they were $5, but they definitely, I think, work really well for me, for what my skill level is, especially. And they're super, super shiny and metallic. So if you haven't, if you have a Michaels, I would recommend them. So I just go over each bubble. Like this is even quicker because I'm just having everything be the same color. So, um, again, right in the beginning, there's a lot of water on there because I just dipped it in the bucket, but it will dry. So just be very careful to always start in the opposite of your hand. So I start in the top left because I am a righty. If you're a lefty, you would start in the top right. And then in theory, you won't be dragging your hand on your paint, or at least not often. It definitely still happens, but yeah, you can tell that they're purple, but I think it's subtle enough that I like it. Maybe this page doesn't make any sense at all. It isn't cohesive, but I think it definitely showed watercolor techniques and that's really what I wanted. So that's good. But yeah, today was a big filming day. I'm actually filming this on the 29th of July and I think now I have like four or five videos ready to go which is pretty awesome but I had to ask to myself I'm in the mood to do all this filming so I'm hoping you're enjoying a bunch of my new content I have a bunch of ideas for August and beyond that hopefully everyone is liking I'm really happy to be bringing back these uh, challenge cups <clears throat> Ugh, my voice is like, stop, you're done. <clears throat> <clears throat> I apologize for that. Oof. Um, yeah, I'm happy to be bringing back these challenge cups. Again, I did it a lot in 2018, but I have probably a whole new subscriber base since then because I just have been very lucky to get a new bunch of subscribers that I've been friends with. So... Hopefully this is not repetitive. And I also don't think I ever pulled the watercolor prompt back then. So this should be a new video, if nothing else. In general, I frequently recommend working from lighter colors to darker colors, because then if you make a mistake with the lighter colors, you can just cover it with the darker colors. Uh, that probably would also very much work for the watercolors, but I just thought the way I wanted to do it worked. I really love how this fish came out, to be honest with you. The blue is a little bit less impressive because it's like bigger, I guess. I don't know, this had, it was much easier to do on each little tendril, but now we just have to figure out what to do with the rest of her, which is another reason why I'm coloring these bubbles next to buy us some time. I don't know what to do. In theory, I could do another color gradient, but what? Purples? Do I even have more than one purple? I don't think so. Pink to purple? Purple to pink? That could be fun. I don't know if she makes any sense. I mean, I guess mermaids could dye their hair, right? So like she didn't have to be born with purple hair to have purple hair. I don't know what they do underwater. I always laugh, it's like in SpongeBob when they like cry underwater and you're like, how is this happening? Or they'll like have a campfire. Like what's going on here? So maybe these mermaids dyed their hair. I hope you can't really hear all of the landscaping going on. It sounds like somebody's cutting down trees actually, but being in the suburbs, there's always somebody doing their lawn. So it's pretty unavoidable unless I film very late at night, which I do do sometimes. But right now it is noon. It is 12.01. So. <clears throat> okay, we are at 33 minutes. What should we do here?
Should I pause? <clears throat> My throat can't handle it anymore, guys. What I think I'm going to do is what I wanted to do in a previous video and did not. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pause the video and I'm gonna put my phone on time-lapse and I'm gonna finish in time-lapse. So it will probably be very, very quick, but I would like to still show you the process without having to talk for another half an hour. So hopefully you're about to see a time-lapse clip. If something goes wrong and you do not see time-lapse, I will just jump to the finished picture. So I hope this was a sufficient tutorial on how I color watercolors. So, yes. So, ready, time lapse. Okay, voila, there she is. As you can see, I did end up going with a real skin tone. Uh, skin tone I plan on working on to get better at, but I think it does look really good right there. And I kind of love it. Like, I really, it's obviously super colorful, but I really thought it was a good way to show how you can easily mix watercolors. I wish this was my hair, I'll be honest with you. Um, I'm sure I wouldn't be able to maintain it the way I needed to, so I understand why it's not, but I just think it's super cool. And then I just use my uh, metallic paint to do her lips and to do her little accessories, more for speed than anything else. I, I tell you, once I get down to those tiny details, I just almost can't be bothered. So, as unfortunate as it is. Um, the rest of this took about 15 minutes to do, which was not too bad, I think, while I'm chatting away it takes longer but I did not have anything to say for 15 minutes so there's that um I hope you enjoy this as my first challenge slash what is it third fourth episode of how I color things I think I'm finally done with my filming marathon so next video you see or next time I film I will finally have a new nail color I feel like it's been forever so if you like this and you made it let's say scales why not let me know subscribe comment down below like this video all that fun stuff i'm gonna have a bunch of links if i can thank you so much for watching and sticking with me and i'll see you guys next time bye